Julian Castro was the mayor of San Antonio, Texas, which is about 85 miles west of Uvalde, and of course, uh, previously served, I think, east of Uvalde. President served as uh, President Barack Obama's Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, and he joins me now. Um, it's it's great to have you on the program, although it's under awful circumstances. Um, that got a lot of attention today. I think the, 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 the idea for Beto to do that was to get attention. Um, and there are some people who are mad at him in Texas, and there are some people who are saying, hell yeah, what are you saying? Good for him. Uh, leadership begins by creating uh, the willingness, the spirit to make change. And, and for a lot of Texans, that willingness and that spirit is there, but you know they need a jump start. Uh, these guys were up there, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the speaker of the house, all of them following the NRA blueprint uh, to deflect and distract. They'll talk about mental illness. They'll talk about other things. They won't talk about what makes this uniquely American. They have mental illness in other places. They have video games in other places. What they don't have is easy access to these weapons of war. So for Bethel to go and do that, you know, that took guts because I'm sure he knew that he was gonna get that response from the folks up there. You also don't know what response you're gonna get in the room of the people who were there watching. Um, but I think that that was a show of leadership on his part and we need that shock to the system. He did it in a civil way. He wasn't uncivil. Uh, in fact, what he got back from one or two of those elected officials was crass and I thought unbecoming of an elected official. But there are a lot of Texans that agree with Bethel on that. And I think what he did also was that he made this a more high profile issue in the governor's race. I mean, that's the question, are there, right? I mean, again, I, you know, I, I think a huge part of this story is uh, the NRA. A huge part is the radicalization of the gun subculture. A huge part of it is, is Republicans. But a huge part of it is just like, there's a lot of people, just voters who don't want there to be gun restrictions. And a lot of them live in Texas. And I, the degree to which, like, this thing that we have, that we see, where we make the sacrifice to Moloch, you know, every so often, um, is a deal with the devil that it seems to me that, like, an, a discomforting number of people are okay with. And as someone who wants to represent, like, what do you say about what public opinion really is in Texas? I mean, what I see is that there are a lot of folks— uh, folks who own guns, folks who go hunting, use them for sporting, you know, go to a shooting range, that agree perhaps not with the entire, uh, you know, uh, range of policy solutions on common sense gun reform, but they agree with, for instance, universal background checks uh, or red flag laws. There's a place that we can start. Uh, and uh, the problem though is that you've had the NRA creating this myth that people are going to go take your guns. If we go down this path, it's going to start a domino effect that means you're going to lose your gun. And they have been successful at that. And what they've created is a greater intensity in who shows up to vote, single issue voters on the other side of this. What's happened, I think, since Columbine and what happens, unfortunately, each time a new town happens or uh, Buffalo or, or yesterday with Uvalde, is that the intensity is going up on the other side. And so it's unfortunate that it's well, taking this, but I believe that we're actually on a path to making changes. Well, that's the thing, right? So there's the one position is don't, we don't want to interfere with gun owners, right? But the, 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 the position of Greg Abbott in particular, let's talk about the governor, right? And, and I think this is true of Dan Patrick and Ken Paxton, the folks that are, are statewide office holders uh, in Texas, is that it's not just that we don't want to interfere, it's that guns are good, that more guns are better, uh, you know, the governor tweeted about how uh, back in 2015, how Texas was losing out to California and the number of guns purchased and he wanted Texas to make up. Um, I think Ted Cruz put bacon on a automatic, semi-automatic uh, rifle mm. in, in, in one of his. Uh, th th there's like, you know, this is a thing to that th we want more people with more guns doing more shooting with more bullets as an affirmative vision of the good. That we are that we are trying to carry out in Texas, and which they are putting into effect at a policy level. It's it's not just don't tread on me. It's like please, please, more guns, please. Well, that's exactly been their position, and according to them, this should be the safest state. We should never see any kind of incidents like this. Look, that El Paso shooter went to that Walmart knowing full well that a whole bunch of folks could be carrying there, knowing that there's an armed security guard. Yesterday, this guy went to uh, you know this school knowing that there's an armed security guard probably and that there are people that may well be carrying inside that school. 
And so that does not deter these folks from going. Not only that, I mean, he had a shootout, right, with law enforcement, and that yep. didn't stop him. More guns has never been the answer. It is a lie. It's a mythology that these guys create. And they were there um, trying to, you know, create it again, manipulate yes. the public again. And that's what Beto O'Rourke basically broke up. And, you know, in, in doing that, sort of seized the, the attention and redirected it to, I think, the truth uh, and some ways that we can actually be constructive on reaching compromise on this. I do have to give credit to the governor of Texas, who has uh, proved himself to be an, an able multitasker. He was able uh, yesterday, again, to his, to his credit, to attend a fundraiser for his reelection campaign uh, Tuesday night in East Texas, just a few hours after those 19 children were murdered uh, in his state. Um, so he says it's postponing all political activities going forward, but you got to walk and chew guns. So good for the governor of Texas there. Julian Castro, thank you very much.